Hello all, welcome to Unfold Data Science. My name is Aman and I am a data scientist. In this video, I am going to explain you 8 different data sources which you can use for your project. So, a lot of you have been asking me what data cell I use and where should I get the data to work on the data science project that I can keep in my resume. So, I am going to show you 8 different data sources, data repositories from where you can get the data and work on that and put that in your resume as well. So, we will start with the generic ones and then I will go and show you how to find the industry specific data or use case specific data. Let us start with the generic ones. Now, the first thing which you can see here is our data sets. Okay? So, these data sets have been provided by our, our community basically and as you can see there are a lot of data sets here. Okay? And some of these can be, you know, measurement of selection of books. Some of these are average of books. So different, different data sets, US car price data and all these data. So you click on this CSV and you get this data downloaded as CSV. Okay. So these data sets are useful for doing some prototype. For example, if you want to understand how recommendation engine work or if you want, if you have learned something, machine learning, deep learning, you want to understand how these things work then these are kind of small data sets. So, as you can see there are not too many rows here. So, maximum you know 15,000 rows we can see here. So, there are not too many rows but these data are useful. Lot of data sets are here of different different varieties. So, these are useful for prototyping or you want to understand something. Okay. Now, let us come to the second thing. So, second repository what I want to show you here is this website data.gov this gives you the data of home of the US government open data. So, all these data sets are provided by United States government and these are openly available for you to use. Now, the good thing here is you can browse by topics. Okay, For example, agriculture, consumer, ocean, public safety. So, if you go to education, you can see here 469 data sets uh, available on education. Okay, You can see federal student loan program. Um, all these different different school survey on crime, different different data sets. So, these data sets also you can use. Okay? Coming on to the third data repository, this is known as UCI machine learning repository. Okay? In UCI machine learning repository, as you can see there are 500, almost 500 data sets. And all these data sets are either classification, um, uh, you can do a classification use case or you can build a recommendation system or you can build a regression use case, you can build a clustering model, all these things you can do and there are close to these data sets are good data sets. Size wise also it is good. For example, if you can see this data set has 50k records and 14 columns. So, all these information you can see right here. So, this is also a good repository to know. Now, let us see some of the data sets if you want to look for something very specific for your need. Okay. So, this is something known as Google research data set. So, I will paste all these links in the description. How to search the data here? Come here and write for example, price prediction. Okay. Price prediction. Now, in price prediction, you can see Airbnb, Airbnb price prediction, Delhi house, car, crop price prediction. Let us click on crop price prediction. As you can see, it is pointing us to different uh, data sets. For example, Kaggle and then some other data source, data from season average, some other website, right? So, if you go to this Kaggle link, you will find the crop price prediction data for Kaggle. If you go for, there are different data sources, right? So, this comes from Google. This is provided by Google and open data set for doing lot of things. So, for example, if you are looking for a, just to example, stock price analysis, then lot of stock price data here, right? So, you can see volatility of stock price index in Thailand. So, this data set gives you the volatility of stock price index for Thailand. So, based on your need, you can search and see if you get the data on that particular uh, Google repository, right? Now, let us see the fourth thing that is Kaggle. So, how do you search the data in Kaggle? So, Kaggle is a very big repository of competitions. Now, you have to write the Google query very specifically if you are looking for something very specific. Here I am looking for Kaggle manufacturing data. Okay? And then when I go to this link, if you can see here, it will list me all the manufacturing data or problem statements in Kaggle. So, if you can see here, 
three competitions, 36 data sets. So you can go and browse all these 36 data sets and whichever meets your need, you can take the data and use it. Okay. Similarly, you can come here and say, for example, somebody is looking for a insurance data, right? Insurance use cases or data sets you can search. And if you go here, you will have different different types of insurance data here, right? So this is how you search data on Kaggle. So what kind of data you need, what kind of use case you need, you can search and just go to that. For example, if you are looking for time series data, you can just write time series forecasting, Kaggle time series forecasting. So if you can see here, lot of, so tags will be time series and lot of new data sources will open. So if you can see here, in the tag time series, we have like 277 data sets, right? So that is how you search data on Kaggle. So this was about Kaggle. Now let us move to some other data repository, which is useful for us. Okay. So this is a, uh, another uh, data repository provided by Google, but the uh, difference from the first repository is it lies on the cloud and it stores very big data sets. Okay. So all these data sets will be relatively big in size. Now all these data sets, which I'm showing you, Kaggle data set or Google data sets or this, these data sets, all these can very well go into your resume. Okay. You can just tweak the names if you want or in its original form also, it can go in your resume, no problem. So you can use that and you can build on these data sets. Okay. So this is another offering from the Google. What is the next one? Let us see this data set. This comes from the World Bank. Okay. So in World Bank data, you can search lot of data sets. So as you can see, it's saying GDP population Indonesia. So let me go here and search something like population. Okay. So when I search population, it comes like this. So as you can see here, population from 1960 to uh, 2015 and there is a CSV link. You can just click and download this data in population. If I want to look for a specific country, let's say India, I put here India and then I can get the population data of India from 1960 to 2015 and you click on the CSV or XML or Excel, you can download the data very well. From the World Bank, you can get different data sets as well. For example, what is the GDP and all those things, demographic data, economic data, you can get very well from this data. Okay. Another data source which I wanted to show you is known as Quandle.com. So Quandle.com is another repository and this is very specific to finance industry. Okay. So it says the premier source for financial, economic and alternative data sets. So if you are looking for a finance data specific to econometric models or specific to something in finance like credit card, insurance, those kind of things, then this is the place. Okay. So as you can see here in core financial data, we have end of the day US stock price, core US fundamental data, lot of data, US equity, hist uh, historical option, implied volatilities, continuous feature trading economics. So this also gives you a huge range of data to choose from. Okay. So these were the eight different data repositories where I'm sure you will get any kind of data that you are looking for. And you can just take this data. And once you learn the tricks on how to build a machine learning model, once you learn the techniques, then obviously you can use this data and very well build a project and uh, present that in your resume, talk about that in an interview. So I'm sure this is useful for you. If you have any doubts, just write me in comment. In my next video, I'll show you how do you choose the right projects for you. For example, in when I talk of customer analytics, then what all can be done in customer analytics? When I talk of, let's say, marketing analytics, then what are the different things that can be done on marketing analytics? I'll try to put that also in your knowledge so that it's very useful for you when you try to look for the right project for you and right data for you. Okay. I'll see you all in the next video. Till then, stay safe and take care.